Good afternoon again, or good morning, almost afternoon. Regarding the statistics um, that we've been talking about, and I know there was a table provided and a few other tables, did you indicate earlier that the clearance, cleared crimes are not um, in the DCJS information database? Like if, if it's cleared, obviously no one's arrested, you don't get it? So we, we don't track clearance rates. Um, we track crimes that are reported. We attract, uh, we attract rather fingerprintable arrests, but we don't connect um, a clearance rate for our categories of crime at the, the department level. So they're not reporting to us, you know, we had 100 um, of these type of offenses, but we only were able to identify a subject or arrest them in 50 of them. Um, I know that some agencies report that, that level of detail, but it's not uh, within DCJS's current data collection efforts. Gotcha. And I also see that these are adult arrests, so family court arrests are not included as well in a lot of this data. Is that accurate? Correct. We, we go based on fingerprintable arrests, and so these are for adults who are 18 and over. Right. So if it's an adjudication, say 17-year-old with a handgun that goes to family court, that's something that is not reported in these numbers? Do you have, uh, if somebody is going to youth part, an adolescent offender, so 16, 17-year-old who's arrested for a felony offense, that information is available to DCJS. It's not reported in these tables in the testimony. Uh, but we have it available, and if it's removed to family court, then they, Got it. you know, stop. It stops at that point. Okay, thank you. So, in, in, then in these numbers that were reported, um, and I'm looking at some of these, and I know that not every agency actually reports statewide, right? Most of them do. 95%. Um, but the ComStat numbers are pretty solid for New York City. So, I just, there's a, a table indicating the adult arrests in New York City, um, misdemeanors and felonies, that in 2017 dismissed, not ACD, 18.2 percent, and in 2021 for misdemeanors, 56.4 percent of cases, more than half, three times, were dismissed, not ACD. And regarding felonies, 2017, 23.1 percent, and in 2021, 48.2 percent were dismissed, not ACD. So, oh, by the way, do DATs include arrests in these statistics? They, once they get fingerprinted, yes. So okay. we don't collect DATs separately. So if they don't show, then it's not reported to DCJS? If there's no, if there's no fingerprint, then it's not No processing, correct. got you. So when you, when you reconcile those numbers, and we think about how now we've got at least tr three times the amount of cases being dismissed, um, can you just reconcile the numbers with your appendix three and your testimony on page four that I indicated earlier, where basically where we say in the middle there, um, New York is experience, experiencing an increase in crime compared to 2021. And then just through September, um, statewide crime increased 29%, violent crime 16, property crime 33, those numbers you gave us before. Can you reconcile those numbers um, with the comments I think you made a little bit earlier that the numbers seem to be flat? I don't, I don't understand that. I believe we said the, in response to one of the uh, questions from, from your colleague that the numbers were flat in the analysis that we did of pretrial release decisions when it comes to re-arrest for those. As our testimony pointed out, um, and you had referenced in your opening, obviously in 2022 there was an increase in crime. And as you've um, indicated in the adult arrest dispositions, the uh, number of cases, particularly in New York City, dismissed not conditionally um, has has increased. So I think the dismissals have as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I've only got a minute left, so I'll just talk about one other area here we, regarding, I guess, the discovery reforms. And I want to just get some comments on that. On page six of your testimony, in New York City, the median days to, to disposition increased from 2019 to 2020, 119 days to 224. For violent felonies, 241 days to 414 days. Nonviolent felonies, 198 to 340. Um, so all of these, I mean, we're talking over a year now. These reforms added increased time constraints regarding disclosure of discovery, tightened up all of these rules for the district attorneys to ultimately provide all the information to the defense so they could timely prepare their defense, right? Justice delayed is dust justice denied. So can you tell me how you feel these reforms have affected those numbers? Because those, I think, are quite significant that we're now extending out cases past a year. So 
I think, you know, as mentioned earlier, the disposition times have dramatically increased. I think they coincided both with the reform's effective date, but also with the, the disruptions that we saw in the pandemic and that the governor has talked about in terms of broad scale court disruptions. So I think it would be a, partially a question for OCA on, on what is the practice within the court system right now around adjournments and, and delays. That's the best answer I can provide. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner and Deputy Commissioner. Okay. Uh, Ryan 